Hey guys, and welcome to this Get Started Subroad Guide, where we cover Azerite traits, talents, stats, rotation, and even more. First up, as always, let's begin with what talents you should be running, and when and what you should be changing your talents to in certain situations. As a baseline, your default talent should look like this. However, some of these change depending on matchups and comps, but we'll get into more detail on why now. On the first row, we've got the decision to choose between Weapon Master and Fine Weakness. Gloom Blade should be avoided due to it providing less consistent damage than Fine Weakness on high armoured targets, and less burst than Weapon Master onto Cloth. Weapon Master should be taken primarily against Cloth users, giving you a chance at dealing some insane damage when dancing on low armoured targets. Fine Weakness, however, should be taken when facing targets with higher armour, as the 20% armor reduction will give you some more consistent burst during your setups. Next up, we have Night Stalker, Subterfuge, and Shadow Focus. Shadow Focus shouldn't ever be considered, as you are already looking to be dancing with a high amount of energy, so the 20% less cost on spells really doesn't equate to much damage. Subterfuge should be your default choice here, it's multi-purpose. Not only does it give you one extra second on dance, but you also gain access to your stealth abilities for 3 seconds after leaving stealth, meaning you have more time to either peel or burst with your stealth abilities. Night Stalker gives you a 12% damage boost while dancing. However, compared to the utility provided by Subterfuge, is weaker in comparison. However, this ability can be paired up with Enveloping Shadow, giving you an extra dance charge. This can be considered in 2v2, as you lose the utility but gain some overall damage. Up next we have Vigor, Deeper Stratagem and Marked for Death. Both Vigor and Deeper Stratagem provide an increase in consistent damage over a longer period of time. Sub Rogue revolves around killing during burst windows, and with Eviscerate being on the forefront of Rogue's burst damage, this leaves us with one option, and that is Marked for Death. This allows you to get 5 combo points on demand. You can either use this in burst windows to gain a 5 combo point eviscerate, or when you need to kidney shot but don't have the time to build up your combo points. Mark for Death provides the most burst and can be used both defensively and offensively. A clear choice. On the level 60 talent row, we have some defensive options. Soothing Darkness, Cheat Death and Elusiveness. Soothing Darkness requires you to be in stealth, or in dance, and you gain 3% of your maximum health. This is more focused around world PvP and PvE, and shouldn't be considered for Arena, as the majority of the game is spent outside of stealth. This leaves us with two options. First up is the more simple choice of Cheat Death. This can be taken when you think you will be bursted while being unable to predict the damage of your opponents. It's an easy option, and you don't have to be paying attention to when you should be using Faint. If you are not comfortable on Rogue, this should be your default choice. However, if you are looking to take your Rogue gameplay to the next step, Elusiveness should not only be taken versus more consistent damage comps, but versus everything, as knowing when you will be the target of a stun allows you to take 30% damage reduction for 5 seconds after pressing Thane. Next up, we have Shot in the Dark, Night Terrors and Prey on the Weak. Here there is only one clear option, and that is Prey on the Weak. Shot in the Dark makes it so that your next cheap shot after leaving stealth or dancing is free. You should always be looking to dance with a high amount of energy, so Shot in the Dark is quite weak. Night Terrors should be avoided, as all it does is provide you with an AoE slow when pressing Shuriken Storm. Prey on the Weak is the best choice in all scenarios. It provides you and your team with a 5% damage bonus onto the target for 6 seconds after stunning them. When compared to the other two options, this talent provides you with a far greater boost of damage. For the penultimate talent row, we have Dark Shadow, Alacrity and Enveloping Shadow. With Haste being the lowest priority stat for sub, which we'll get into more detail on later, means that Alacrity is very weak when compared to the other two, so shouldn't be taken in any scenario. Dark Shadow should be your default here. It provides the most burst during your dance, providing you with a static 15% increase in damage whilst bursting, and should be your default choice. Enveloping Shadow, however, gives you an extra dance charge and a reduced cooldown on dance when spending combo points. 
This can be combined with Night Stalker when looking to do some more consistent damage and lockdown, when playing 2v2 for example. Last up, we have the level 100 talents, giving us the option to choose between Master of Shadows, Secret Technique and Shuriken Tornado. Both Secret Technique and Shuriken Tornado are designed solely around PvE, both providing a boost to your AoE damage. With Sub prioritising single target burst damage in Arena, it leaves us with only one option, Master of Shadows. This is our default choice in all scenarios, it gives you a 25 energy over 3 seconds, when you either dance or get a re-stealth. This is great for giving you a little extra energy during your burst windows, and provides a great boost of damage while bursting. Unlike Legion, we have the option to choose between 12 talents that are not bound by tiers, meaning you can pick any three in any combination, whilst also choosing which trinket you should run. First up, let's cover trinket choice. We have the option to choose between Gladiator's Medallion, Relentless and Adaptation. Gladiator's Medallion is the recommended choice in most situations. It gives you full control over your trinket on a 2 minute cooldown, allowing you to use it either defensively to survive or even aggressively to score a kill. Adaptation should never be considered in Arena, as it is too easily exploited by your opponents. If they see you with Adaptation, they can bait your trinket easily, then set up a kill that you cannot escape. Last up is Relentless. Relentless is good versus compositions where you are likely to be crowd controlled often, but don't need Gladiator's Medallion to survive the burst. Low burst, high crowd control comps such as God Comp are a good example. Relentless can also be combined with every man for himself if you are a human. As for PvP talents, there are 5 main talents that are much better when compared to the others. These are Cold Blood, Smoke Bomb, Phantom Assassin, Maneuverability and lastly Shadowy Jewel. Which ones you pick depend heavily on the composition you are playing and what you are facing. Smoke Bomb is great when playing setup based compositions, giving you a tool you can use to either secure kills on targets without a trinket, or easily force a trinket from your opponent without any crowd control onto their healer. Great in almost all compositions and one of Sub's bread and butter tools for setting up kills. Cold Blood provides you with some great on demand burst that does 10% of the target's total health in shadow damage. This is off the global and can be used at some point during your burst window on either Shadow Strike or Cheap Shot to do some unexpected burst damage. Phantom Assassin has been the victim of some nerfs recently, meaning it now only equates to a 10% increase in critical strike while dancing or in stealth. This can be taken when you need some damage during burst windows to land a kill. However, is weaker now when compared to Cold Blood. Maneuverability allows you to ignore slows for 4 seconds, however, doesn't break roots. This can be used when you are finding yourself struggling for uptime due to snares, such as when facing frost mages or elemental shamans that are consistently kiting you. Shadowy Jewel should primarily be taken when facing holy paladins as they heavily rely on Hand of Sacrifice to keep their teammates alive. Shadowy Jewel is the equivalent to a smoke bomb. You and the player are in a Shadowy Jewel and will not be able to be targeted by anybody on either team, allowing you to finish them off without them being able to use cooldowns. Something often overlooked with Shadowy Jewel is the ability to use stealth abilities, meaning you can easily burst them down during the 6 second window. Now in Battle for Azeroth, we've gained access to some extra traits that buff our abilities in certain ways. You can get an Azerite trait on your head, shoulders and chest. And you have a main trait, secondary trait and a defensive trait. After the continuous nerfs to sub-specific traits, there is currently no traits which stand out as must have. So it's almost always worth wearing the highest item level Azerite piece with a decent trait that you have. However, there are a few main traits which you should look out for. First up is Knight's Vengeance, this is the preferred choice of trait from North America's top rogue Peekaboo, who opts to run three of these traits, giving you some insane burst when using Eviscerate after applying your Nightblade. Another great option is the trait Battlefield Focus for the Horde or Battlefield Precision for the Alliance. 
Favoured by Europe's rogue Waz, Battlefield Focus has a chance to add a debuff to the target, causing them to take some additional damage from you and your team. This is a good trait to have when playing setup compositions, where all members of your team will be helping assist in damage, such as Rogue Mage Priest. The most common trait setup is the one that provides the most consistent damage, and that is one of the trait inevitability which increases your backstab and shadow strike damage, but most importantly extends the duration of your symbols of death when backstabbing or shadow striking. Combining this with two of the trait Blade in the Shadow rounds up your consistent damage trait setup. As for secondary traits, aim for ones that giving you the passive stat increases such as Earthlink or Blood Siphon or Overwhelming Power, as the damage from traits like Gut Ripper or Heed My Call can potentially break crowd control and don't provide much of a damage boost. Now in Battle for Azeroth, once again stats and gear matter, so making sure you're going for the correct stats on gear is very important in gaining that extra edge. Currently for Sub Rogue, your stat priority looks like this. You want to be focusing mainly on gaining the maximum agility, and then mastery and crit on the majority of your gear. Versatility is somewhat useful in gaining some extra damage and damage reduction. However, haste for Sub Rogue should be avoided. For enchants, you want to be getting one masterful navigation on one weapon and then deadly navigation on the other. And for your rings and sockets, you'll be wanting mastery, making sure to always have one agility gem. As for trinkets, aim to get passive agility and unused mastery or vice versa, aiming to have at least one unused trinket to combine with your burst damage. Alliance players will want to either be human Night Elf or Dark Iron Dwarf, each providing their own strengths in certain matchups. Human allows you to play with Relentless and still have a way to break out of stuns, something that's incredibly valuable when playing against other rogues. You can also play with Gladiator's Medallion to trink it out of stuns every 90 seconds. Night Elf is also a great option as it provides great utility with Shadow Mode, as it gives you an additional way to re-stealth to gain access to your stealthed abilities. Dark Iron Dwarf is also has a place versus sp specific comps such as Spell Cleaves or Jungle Cleave, giving you a great defensive tool that can turn the tides giving you a big agility boost. For Horde players, there is only one race you should go, and that is Orc. Due to his passive stun reduction via hardiness and boost of on demand damage from Blood Fury. If for some reason Orc does not appeal to you, the next best would be Panda for the extra versatility and crowd control. In the final section of this guide, we'll be covering how to correctly deal damage and how you should be bursting, as well as covering openers. The general rotation for sub outside of dance looks like this. You want to aim to keep Nightblade up onto the target, and then use Backstab to generate combo points. And then to spend those combo points onto your Eviscerate. If two or more targets are stacked, replace Backstab with Shuriken Storm, as this will generate more combo points, which you can spend on finishers to reduce your dance charges to set up your next burst window via Deepening Shadows. To deal the maximum burst damage during a setup, you should make sure to have already put Nightblade onto the target, and then to have enough combo points to Kidney. Your rotation should then look like this. Kidney Shot? Smoke Bomb, Dance plus Shadow Blades, Shadow Strike, Shadow Strike, Eviscerate, Marked for Death, Eviscerate, Cheap Shot, Shadow Strike, Eviscerate. Take into account this rotation is used in Smoke Bomb and Kidney Shot, so it's best used when the target has no trinket. Bear in mind, when at 4 combo points, it's always worth to use Eviscerate instead of an extra Shadow Strike to deal the maximum damage. In regards to openers, you have two different types. The first one is using Kidney Shot. This is recommended when opening onto healers, as you won't need the added crowd control Kidney provides Open in this way looks like this, adding cold blood onto any of the shadow strikes or cheap shots 
to deal some extra damage if required. Cheap Shot, Nightblade, Dance plus Symbols of Death, Shadow Strike, Shadow Strike, Kidney Shot, Marked for Death, Eviscerate, Shadow Strike, Cheap Shot, Eviscerate. Your second opener is without Kidney Shot. This is best used when you will be required to extend CC chains with your Kidney Shot onto healers. This is also your standard dance burst rotation, incorporating Marked for Death. Cheap Shot, Nightblade, Symbols of Death, Dance, Marked for Death, Eviscerate, Shadow Strike, Cheap Shot, Eviscerate, Cheap Shot. However, bear in mind Rogue is very situational and doesn't really follow a set rotation outside of bursting. Your main goal is to crowd control the healer while locking down a DPS, using your shadow dances to burst. Alright everyone, that just about wraps up this get started sub rogue guide. Be sure to leave any comments you may have below. Hope you enjoyed.